Hello everybody, this is Ben, and this is going to be a chess commentary between Vichy Anand and Magnus Carlsen in the Chess Classic Mains 2008. So Vichy Anand is playing white, and Carlsen is playing black. Let's uh, flip the chessboard so you guys can see uh, in the perspective of white, which is the winner of this game. So Vichy Anand begins with pawn to e4. This begins the uh, king's pawn. Magnus Carlsen continues with c5 to Sicilian. We got f3, um, d, d6. This is the open Sicilian. d4, uh, c takes d4. Knight takes, knight to f6, knight to c3, g6. This is the Sicilian dragon variation of the open Sicilian. And now we have bishop to e3, bishop g7, fiend cataling the black bishop, preparing to castle. f2 to prevent the knight from coming to, coming to g4. Um, this is the standard line, the main line of the dragon, and this is the Yugoslav attack. So the knight comes to c6. Black have two options. He can go to f4, f5. Usually f4 is the, the what's played. This is the Yugoslav attack. But right now, Vichy Anand chose to play d2. Um, Black's going to castle. And white plays bishop c4, Yugoslav attack. Now black plays d d7, completing his development. And now white plays bishop b3. This tucks away the bishop, so there's no direct attack on the bishop. Now Anand play uh, Carlson plays rook over to c8. Anand castles, um, and then knight e5. This is all within the main lines of the Yugoslav attack. Now Anand continues with b1, tucking the king over, king to b1 to protect itself. Another thing it can do is continue h4. These are all book lines. And now Carlson plays a6, preparing b5, a5 and attack on the king side. Notice how we have this nice diagonal full of pieces. Um, the bishops on both sides are pointing at each other's king, so there's going to be tremendous pawn storms on both sides. It's basically whoever can get to the other side first and be begin an attack. Um, there's a lot of tactical variations as you can see. And the game's going to end very fast from here. So now Anon plays h4, um, beginning his attack. Carlson plays h5, blunting the pawn storm. But now Anon can continue with g4, breaking open the pawn structure. So Carlson plays pawn takes g4. Anon chose to continue with his attack with h5, and Carlson plays knight takes h5. He doesn't want to weaken his king position, um, and this is pretty much uh, along book lines. Knight takes h5. Um, Anon continues with rook over to g1, positioning his two rooks on um, the flank files bearing down upon the king. Now, the idea of Carlson is um, um, rook to c5 and queen to a5, preparing an attack on the black king. So, Carlson plays queen a5, and now plays bishop h6 trying to trade out this bishop. If this bishop captures, this is very bad news for Carlsen. So of course Carlsen recognized this. 
and Carlson plays Rook takes c3. So Carlson sacrifices his knight. Why does he do this? Well, Carlson wants Carlson wants to gain play on Anand's king's side, and uh, Carlson recognizes that this bishop takes really doesn't threaten the king all that much. It's pretty well protected. So Carlson is doing an exchange sack on Anand's king's side, and let's see what what happens. What what's the compensation? Okay, so rook takes knight on c3. Anand plays bishop takes g7. Carlson plays king takes g7. So neutralizing threat, but this diagonal is still very open. Anand plays rook takes h5. And counter exchange sack. So now Carlson took a knight on c3. Now Anand says, I don't care about this rook. I'm not going to lose any time, any tempo. Not gonna waste any moves on this threat because you're not really threatening my king or anything. It's very well protected. I'm gonna just exchange sack and attack your king with rook takes knight on h5. Now Carlson re replies with rook takes b3. Another exchange sack. He's Carlson says I don't care about your rook. I'm gonna take your bishop with my rook. This rook already have two kills. It has a knight and a bishop. And now there's serious, serious threats. Say if Anon takes the queen here, Carlson does get sufficient compensation. And that's what Anon plays. Anon takes Carlson's queen. And Carlson now plays bishop, or rook takes b2, threatening a deadly fork if the king takes the rook with knight c4. Forking the queen and the king. So, of course, um, Anand can't take the rook here. He has to get out of the way. He goes to a1. Now Carlson plays um, g, g pawn takes h5, taking the rook. Now the material looks like Carlson gave up a queen, but he gains a rook, a bishop, and three pawns, which looks better. Of course, Anand can also always recapture this. Rook. So he's based. Uh, Carlson is basically down two points. Right now, Anand is clear, clearly winning because Carlson really doesn't have much compensation to show for his queen sack. Anand continues with f4, attacking the knight on e5. Carlson plays e6, bishop to e6, saying, "I don't care about this knight." I'm going to attack your pawn here, forking the queen and the king. And so Anand plays, knight takes bishop, checking the king. Carlson recaptures the knight on e6. And now Anand plays, pawn takes e5. I don't know if this was a miscalculation on Carlson's part, but right now it's looking really, really bad for Carlson because he has two rooks against a queen and rook and now Carlson at the very least must win this rook here to be uh, even on material even though well he's up three pawns but he is down sufficient significant material two pawns worth of material so Carlson plays rook to b5 attacking the queen the queen goes to c7 attacking these uh, attacking uh, the pawn on e the e7. Now uh, now Carlson plays e5, taking the pawn on e5, or rook to e5, taking the pawn on e5. And now Carlson Anand plays queen take e7 check. Carlson plays rook to f7 block counter attacking the queen. Queen to e queen takes on d6, rook takes on e4, rook to h1, rook to f5 protecting the pawn, queen to e7 check, king moves out the way to g6, queen to e8 check, king to g7, um, returning to original position, rook to d1, calls in place, 
rook to d5, exchanging a rook. Of course, a non being material up, he's just happy to exchange. So rook to d5. Anon is threatening a checkmate here with uh, d7, king to uh, king to h7 or uh, f6, and then there's going to be a checkmate. Then there's nothing Carlson can do. But uh, queen to f7, king to g. You know, it's it's gonna be very bad. Basically, the king has very very difficult to weasel out because all of these holes are dark squares. So Carlson can just move his queen to a dark square. Anyways, Carlson is basically forced to uh, exchange rooks. Anon takes on d5. Carlson retakes the rook. Um, Anon is attacking his queen. Or Carlson is attacking a non's queen. So now Carlson a non plays queen to h5, uh, queen to h5, attacking the pawn on d5, uh, b5. Basic. This is basically a lost position. So we have the following end game moves: queen to h g5 check, chain to h7, queen to d5 check. Rook to a4, queen to g5, rook to c4, king to b2, rook to b4 check, king to c1, rook to a4, a3, um, trying to sort of a time waster, rook to c4, king to d2, Rook to d4 check, king to e1, rook to a4, king to f1, coming close to this pawn, rook to c4, king to g1, rook to c6, queen to d5, rook to g6, a4, b takes a4, queen to d7 check, king to h6, queen takes a4, King to g5, c4, king to g5, c5, king to e5, queen to d7. And now, a not, uh, now Carlson resigns. This is a very, very explosive example of two of the best players in the world between Vichy Anand and Magnus Carlson. In the variation Sicilian Dragon. Thank you. My name is Ben, and this has been a chess analysis between Vishy Adnan and Magnus Carlsen.